Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at fundamental forces and force mediating particles. So let's get started. Now, it starts here by saying there are four fundamental forces of nature, the strong nuclear force, weak nuclear force, electromagnetic force, and the gravitational force. Each force has an associated force mediating particle, also known as a force carrier. These particles are bosons, not fermions like the ones discussed up until now. So remember fermions were matter particles like quarks and leptons, and remember hadrons like baryons and mesons were formed from quarks. But now we're discussing bosons here. And it says that when matter particles interact, they exchange a boson, and it is this exchange that leads to them experiencing a force. So let's look at each of the four fundamental forces of nature in turn, and we'll also look at their force carriers. So starting with the strong nuclear force, it says that in the atomic nucleus of every element other than hydrogen, there's more than one proton. The charge on each proton is positive, so why don't the protons fly apart, breaking up the nucleus? How can we keep those protons together? So how do we stop these protons, which are the grey ones in the nucleus here, from flying apart? Well, it says there is a short-range force that exists that holds quarks together inside protons and neutrons, and therefore keeps these particles inside the nucleus. This force is stronger than the electrostatic repulsion that tries to force the particles apart. We call it the strong nuclear force. This force acts over an extremely short range of approximately 10 to the minus 15 meters, which is the order of magnitude of a nucleus. Outside of this range, the strong force has no effect whatsoever. If a proton was placed close to a nucleus, it would be repelled and forced away. And lastly, it says the particle responsible for carrying the strong force is called the gluon. So the way I like to remember the force carrier as being the gluon for the strong nuclear force is to think about it as being glue that holds together the protons and neutrons inside the nucleus of an atom. And glue is usually strong and it sticks stuff together, it holds them together. Just like gluons hold the quarks together. And if you look at this diagram here of the proton, it shows you that the proton is made up of two up quarks and a down quark, which we've already seen in the previous theory video, but you can see there's these little arrows between the up quarks and the down quark. And these little arrows are representing the strong nuclear force which is acting between these quarks. And it says here the strong force attracts all quarks to each other, regardless of their electric charge. And if you look here this time, we have a bit more information where it says there is a residual effect of this strong nuclear force which acts between neighbouring nucleons, holding them together inside nuclei. This explains why proton repulsion does not cause nuclei to fly apart. Jumping back to the notes now, our next fundamental force of nature is the weak nuclear force. And it says that the weak nuclear force is involved in radioactive beta decay. Despite its name, it is not actually the weakest of all the fundamental forces. We're going to see that that's the gravitational force. It is also an extremely short-range force, acting over distances less than approximately 10 to the minus 18 meters. And the force mediating particles for the weak nuclear force are the W+, W-, and Z bosons. And a good way to remember that the W and Z bosons are the force carriers for the weak nuclear force is just to remember the letter W for the word weak and the letter W for the W plus and minus bosons. Next we have the electromagnetic force, and it says that the electromagnetic force affects particles with charge and acts over an infinite range. It holds electrons in their orbit around the nucleus. And it does this because the nucleus is positively charged overall, because remember a nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons, where protons are positively charged and neutrons are neutral. So that means a nucleus will be positively charged, and the negatively charged electrons in the orbits of an atom will be attracted towards the positively charged nucleus. But this electromagnetic force holds the electrons in their orbits. It then says the force mediating particle for the electromagnetic force is the photon. And a good way to remember that is to remember photons are particles of light, and light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. So we've got this word electromagnetic, so electromagnetic radiation is light, and photons are particles of light. And that's for the electromagnetic force. And it says here that photons, these particles of light, have no mass or charge. Lastly, we have the gravitational force, and it says that the gravitational force is the force of attraction between objects with mass. This means it holds matter together in planets, stars, and galaxies. With an infinite range, we are most familiar with this type of force in everyday life, though it is by far the weakest force. And lastly, the force mediating particle for the gravitational force is the graviton, but this is said to be a hypothetical particle as it has not yet been detected. So to summarise, we've got this table here which is really worth remembering. So we've got our fundamental forces here, strong nuclear, weak nuclear, electromagnetic and gravitational. We then got their force mediating particles, i.e. their force carriers. So we've got the gluons for the strong nuclear force, W plus and minus and Z bosons for the weak nuclear force, the photon for the electromagnetic force, and the graviton for the gravitational force. 
We then have their approximate range in meters. So for the strong nuclear force, we've got 10 to the minus 15 meters, 10 to the minus 18 meters for the weak nuclear force. We've then got infinite ranges for the electromagnetic and gravitational forces. We've then got relative strength of these forces where they're all compared to the strength of the strong nuclear force. So if we make the strength of the strong nuclear force the number one, then we can see the next strongest is the electromagnetic force at only 10 to the minus two times that of the strong nuclear force. We've then got the weak nuclear force, which is a strength of 10 to the minus six times that of the strong nuclear force. And lastly, the gravitational force is 10 to the minus 39 times that of the strong nuclear force. So the gravitational force is by far the weakest there. And lastly, it's worth also remembering what each one is responsible for. So remember that the strong nuclear force is responsible for holding protons and neutrons together in the nucleus. We've also got the weak nuclear force, which is involved in beta decay. The electromagnetic force is responsible for holding electrons in atoms. And lastly, the gravitational force is responsible for holding matter together in planets, stars and galaxies. So I definitely recommend remembering the properties of these four fundamental forces and their force carriers. So to conclude, we now have a more complete diagram of the particles in the standard model. So we're coming back to our diagram of the three generations of particles. So here we have our quarks and leptons. So that was generation one, remember, generation two and generation three. And now we've added on our four bosons as well. So in generation one, we've got our up and down quarks, the electron neutrino and electron. In generation two, we've got the charm and strange quarks and the muon neutrino and the muon. And then in generation three, we've got the top and bottom quarks and the tau neutrino and tau particles there. We've then got our bosons, i.e. our force carriers. So that's our photon, gluon, Z bosons and W plus and minus bosons. And you'll notice that the graviton is not included in this standard model diagram here. And that's because there is no evidence for its existence yet. So we can't put it in this complete diagram. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.